Hello everyone. As you probably know, I started a series on making your own floats a couple of weeks ago, a couple of episodes ago. It's been a while. And so I'm halfway through with that series. And the second part of that series is going to be the fabrication of skewed floats. Now, in the past, in my very first single episode of Making Floats, there was a skewed float. And that's the float that I used in the series that I did on skewed planes, skewed rabbit planes, which included also the dado plane that I fabricated. And what I found was that using one float for the four corners of the skewed wedge pocket was very difficult. Um, it's really not appropriate and so I just winged it and I have a series, I actually have two series of planes planned for 2023 that are going to be multiple planes that are all skewed including planes that are skewed to the opposite side of what I have done in the past, which means that not even if I insisted on using the single float that I have at this time, that wouldn't even work because it's handed improperly. So I have to make a set of planes for one skew and then the opposite handed set of, of floats, I should say, for the for the other set of planes that are or the other pocket that's handed the opposite way getting it mixed up with the different terminology but I think you know what I mean so it's ending up to be much more work than just one single float um, the benefit of this is that it's going to be an opportunity to learn for myself and it's going to be an opportunity for us all possibly to learn because you'll be able to watch me do the work and you'll be able to sort of f from a safe dif distance analyze my thinking and my thoughts and benefit from my work that way uh, as it may affect your own work sometime down the line so I have a diagram set up and what I'm going to do is cut away from this camera go to my diagram and then from there I'll explain what my plans are and then I'll set up again and begin the work there's been a bunch of work that's been going on for basically on and off for several months that have brought me to this point and uh, I'm ready to really hit it hard and punch these six floats out and so here we go so let's take a quick look at this diagram that I have this is the shape of the wedge pocket for a traditional skewed plane where the escapement would be on the left I have some planes where there the wedge pocket is handed the other way and the escapement would be on the right so I have three floats planned for each wedge pocket float number two will do each corner on the bottom of the corner and have safety edges on the sides the teeth will only be cut in the edge a um, float number one for this wedge pocket will cut on the right side face and have a safety edge on the edge float number three will have the cutting face on the left side and the safety edge the non-cutting edge on the edge itself and the idea is that the safety edge will prevent the float from cutting too far in one direction so if I want to make this corner really crisp I probably will have to use a combination of each float in order to get that corner really tight 
And then the idea is, of course, the upper corners are the same. And um, and then I'll do this. I'll make the three separate floats for the other wedge pocket on the other plane. So that's that's all there is to that. So here is my setup for filing the skew on the edge of the floats. What I have here are two blocks that elevate everything. Then I have a piece of steel over the block, which I use normally, you'll see me use it as my straight edge. That's underneath this, this board, this like one by two and a half board. Then I have some pieces of one inch steel, my winding sticks and some other scraps. And they're stepped. And they're stepped in a way where this float can lean back at the 20 degree angle so that when I file flat, I get the skew I want. And then these clamps lock in the float at the tilt that I have. And the pieces are stepped back and held in place by these clamps and this clamp over here. So everything is locked onto this little board and all I need to do is release this one clamp and this should be able to pop right out and then I'll put another another skew in its place and lock it in with this clamp and I should be good to go. So that's the idea. When I do this kind of work, if I haven't mentioned it before, I'll mention it now. I like to use hearing protection, the high pitch of the file, and the hacksaw bothers my ears, and I'm not in a position to suffer any more hearing loss than I have already. So I have my plugs. These were already cut close to the 20 degree angle I need on the grinder. So what I'm going to do is dial that in. I have my protractor at set at 20 degrees. That'll be real handy. And then I can also use the back edge of the other floats as a straight edge and just make sure that there are no errors introduced in cutting this angle by creating a wavy edge. So I have each file already dedicated where it should go in relation to the drawing that I showed everyone. So that's how I keep track of what has to be done to each float. Okay, so I have the three, I have floats one, two, and three set with the skew. So now I have to flip this jig over and make it so that I can file the same skew but from handed the other way. Alright, let's see how this goes. 
I have the teeth laid out on one of the skewed floats and I'm going to start roughing out the uh, teeth with the hacksaw so the float is pointed this way and that's how the teeth are going to point so it cuts on the push stroke let me get my magnifying glass so it's handy Okay, I have the skewed float laid out, and uh, I'm going to start roughing it out with the hacksaw, and we'll see how this goes. So when I set this up originally I had some problems with this flipping over and I think I have it secured right where I want it. So let me keep going with this.
that's pretty warm right now so I'm gonna switch over to the file now Okay, I'm going to tune this one more time, but I'm going to take my fine file and I just want to basically joint the tops of all these teeth one more time before I set the final depth. So the angle... Angle looks really good. Everything looks really good on it. So the idea is that you want this corner, whichever corner you're working, to be crisp. So this looks pretty good. Cut smooth. The angle is good. You could always change it if it's slightly off. It's not really a big deal. But I think this is going to be the way to go. These teeth are a little uneven, but um, so cosmetically it's not perfect, but it's going to do the job, and that's what I care about the most. So you can see everything came out real nice and straight, flat. looks good okay so the other one will go the same way and then uh, I will set up and do the faces after that